Hi everybody, welcome back to the garden. I'm gonna give you a very quick tour first and then I wanna talk about my tomato strategy this year because I'm feeling very hopeful about it. Uh, but first, I'll give you a quick rundown of everything else that is going on. Uh, this is all potatoes here. I'm doing a root stout method and then we've got some squash in the back there and then cucumbers going up this trellis and the cucumbers are looking great which is so encouraging because if you followed me last year you know that I really struggled with getting my cucumbers off the ground um, and for a while I was a little worried about my potatoes but they are coming up now I've held them up once I already need to hill them up again so fingers crossed for a really great potato harvest on the other half of that bed or I guess third uh, I'll put in sweet potato slips but those haven't arrived yet We've got the green stalks up on the porch. They're doing great. This is the tomato bed. We'll come back to that. Um, over here in the front. So last year I had uh, squash in here. It worked out pretty well. It got a little difficult to get in there and um, get around the plants after a while. And so this year I just decided that um, I was gonna try a different strategy for the squash. And I didn't really want to grow food in this front bed. What I really have a dream for is just like meadow flower type vibes. So I sowed a whole bunch of different flower seeds. Um, some that I had that I put in that I really wanted. Some that came from a mixture. And so far it's looking pretty darn good. I can see there's a couple weeds in here I need to get out. Um, but there's definitely some sunflowers popping up. I've already got cosmos blooming. There's definitely some zinnias coming up. So I'm really hopeful that that's gonna turn out to be beautiful um, and just something lovely to look at and then maybe trim some flowers from for on the table inside. And then here in the third bed, all of those sunflowers reseeded themselves from last year and they are absolutely beautiful. Um, I'll show you a little bit more when I get there because there's something funny happening. But in the front here is the garlic and peppers. The garlic is, um, the hard neck has set off scapes and the leaves are starting to die back. So those should be coming up in the next month or so. And then what I haven't done, the only thing I haven't planted yet this year is the okra. So the okra is going to go here where the garlic is. So I need to come out here and just pull a few of the garlics to put some okra seeds in and kind of let those get started while the garlic finishes. Those should not impede each other. This sunflower here, Kim, is growing through the trellis. Like it's on the inside of the trellis. And I tried so hard to keep weaving it out of the, the trellis and saying, no, you grow on that side. And it has just taken over. I have just, I have surrendered to it growing the way that it wants to grow. I mean, these sunflowers are taller, like taller than me at this point and they're beautiful and there's so many blooms and I'm just like over the moon about them because sunflowers are just the best. They're my favorite garden flower. My great grandmother always grew them. So they are a symbol of her to me. So to have them come back in a garden where I spend so much time thinking about her and her life and the things that I wish I knew about her um, to see these come back really strong really beautiful it, it just means so much to me so this area of the garden will be sunflowers as long as they want to receive themselves so um, yeah I highly recommend just letting some of your I know a lot of people grow sunflowers to cut them but um, just leave a few, let the birds get to them, let them drop some seeds and my God, they're glorious. <laughs> I could talk about them forever, but we need to move on. So here, actually on the other side where the sunflower is taken over, I planted loofahs on this whole arch here. Um, the sunflower is shading out the loofahs a little bit, but I am okay with that because we've got some on this side that are doing well. I don't know if they're, if we're gonna have a long enough season for them to dry, but I hope so. Um, I got them planted a little bit late. And then we've got more cucumbers here. And then the beans are going absolutely nuts. Like these ones are already up over the top of the trellis. 
I don't know what to do because I'm just like, I did not expect them to go this crazy and they're like bushing out and there's some that are like vining away from the trellis that I'm trying to contain. I've got some peppers in the front of them, but I'm really encouraged this season because last year I struggled with a lot of things. I struggled with my cucumbers. I struggled with my beans. This bed had all sorts of tomato disease in it and um, it was just a crazy year and it was a little disheartening to have a garden not, you know, do as well as I had hoped. Uh, pause for the car to drive by. <laughs> okay, now that you can <clears throat> hopefully hear me again. Um, so yeah, this year things are just going crazy. I'm a little bit uh, overwhelmed because I just kind of had that expectation that I might struggle with the cucumbers again like I did last year. I might struggle with the beans and like everything is taking off. Everything is so lush and beautiful. Um, I'm trying something different here with the tomatoes, which is a little bit risky and I'll explain why, but so far it appears to be working. And so I'm just really happy <laughs> to be in the garden this year and to have it just taking off and being a little bit wild already because it just, that's the situation. So let me turn you around here and I'll explain what I'm doing with the tomatoes. So as I mentioned, that first bed down there last year, I had, um, some tomato disease issues this year. So I have not planted any, or last year, I have not planted any tomatoes in that bed. That's just gonna be beans and cucumbers and peppers, things that won't be affected by the disease in that soil. There's not really a lot you can do. There's some things you can do I did last year to mitigate to get through, but I decided this year I would try something different. So this is the bed, bed two, which I had tomatoes in last year on this big trellis. If you watched my videos last year, you will remember the Matt's Wild Cherry that just took over. Um, so here is my plan. I have growing on the main trellis, some Matt's Wild Cherry, some Dr. Witchy, some Yellow Pear, and I think one other kind that I can't remember. And then, which are all indeterminate varieties, so they will grow as, tall, as long as they have support. And then in front of them, kind of staggered, right? So like this one's planted here. Then there's that one on the trellis. Then there's this one here, one on the trellis. You get the idea. In front of them, I have determinate varieties, which will only grow to a certain height and only set a certain amount of fruit. And then they are done for. So what I'm hoping is that we'll have the determinants in front. And I'm doing the same thing on the other side. I'll have the determinants in front that'll grow really beautifully get us a great big first harvest, and then we'll kind of have the trellis tomatoes to, to carry us through the rest of the season. So far, this seems to be working beautifully. Some of these look kind of wonky. So we had a lot of rain last night, so these determinants started to kind of fall over. And the determinants is where a lot of people will use, sorry. Oh no, that's bad, okay. Um, determinants is where people will use tomato cages to support them. Uh, and I do have some tomato cages in the shed that I might pull out if I need to. It's probably a little too late to get them set up though. So what I'm doing for now is just tying these back to the trellis uh, to give them a little support. This one looks wonky because it had kind of flopped over the side <laughs> in the rain. Um, and so, so far it's working well. Um, I am, you can kind of see on this one here. So I'm not so much... I'm not pruning, right? You don't want to prune suckers off of determinants because you're only going to get a certain amount of fruit on like a, a indeterminate that a lot of people prune down to a few main stems to help kind of ward off disease and things like that. The only thing I'm doing to my determinants is taking the lower leaves off. And the reason, oh, and the reason that I'm taking the lower leaves off is because I don't, right? So, um, water splashing on leaves can create and spread disease. So um, if I don't want that to happen to the determinants and then spread to the indeterminants. So I am taking the lower leaves off. I'm leaving the suckers except for the select few that are really, really close to the soil line. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing to help prevent the spread of disease here because some will say I have these planted too close together for being in the humid south. We're gonna find out if I do or if I don't. <laughs> um, but that is my tomato plan this year. So 
leave me your thoughts below if you've done something similar or um, if you think there's something that I'm missing with my plan, but hopefully it works well and I will be back in the future um, with great updates because I think this would, this is a good plan that if, if this works to kind of do the two different varieties um, and get a really big harvest this year. That is what we're hoping for. Um, yeah, oh, I'm also doing, attempting to do seed saving for the first time. I will talk about that more at another time, but that is what is going on in the garden so far. I was just out here pruning up the tomatoes and tying them up. So I wanted to share my plan with you all because it's a little bit different than last year. And um, I'm sure I am not the first person who has thought of this plan, but I haven't seen anybody else on YouTube talking about doing something similar. So I wanted to share, but hopefully, We'll have lots of potatoes and tomatoes and cucumbers and green beans and okra and this will just be the best garden year yet. Um, in the meantime, I will see you later.